What should guide Christian voting? Should it be party labels? Stay tuned. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. My colleague, Colonel Tim Moore, and I have a very special guest in the studio with us today. Her name is Marsha Coonley, and she is from Albuquerque, New Mexico. We had her on this program a, a couple of months ago when we were discussing the rapture mm -hmm. and her wonderful book, the first book she had written in Bible prophecy, which was outstanding, called Rapture 911, which people can find out about when they go to your website. And we'll tell you later on in the program how to find that website. But today we want to talk about her latest book, which is called Your Vote Matters, The Election Omen. Mm -hmm. uh, boy, what a cover. <laughs> yes. Uh, but anyway, we want to talk about what should guide Christian voters. When a Christian goes to the polls, what should determine how they vote? Mm -hmm. Should it be a party label, for example? Go for it. Sure. Well, first, thanks for inviting me back, okay. Dave. I appreciate uh, being here again. And uh, no, it's not uh, party labels uh, that should guide, uh, or, uh, our, guide our voting. Yeah, right. um, it's really certain issues uh, that the Bible speaks about uh, that will help us identify which particular okay. candidate to vote well, let's for. Let's get specific. What, sure. what issues you got in mind? Sure. Uh, so the first one that I have uh, is abortion. Mm. So life. Um, we have to remember that God, He's the creator of life. He values life. Uh, so that one is a big deal to God. It would God. be hard to sure. find one more important. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That is how, that, my red line. Okay, so that's the issue. But what, what is the Christian position? Oh, sure. Uh, so the Christian Christian position uh, is that uh, you you can't be pro-abortion. Uh, you have to be pro-life. So you have to vote for a candidate that is uh, pro-life as well, um, and that uh, means not supporting a candidate even if they're against. Um, you know, late term abortion. It's a candidate that's against any kind of abortion. Uh, you have to be pro life on this, just like God is. He values life. He values life, right? Yes. Absolutely. I found even as I served in the legislature, Marsha, in Kentucky, that I could determine where a particular elected official was going to come down on a whole host of issues yes. based on what they declared on life. And what was mm -hmm. most galling and very, very sad was there were a number of folks who would declare themselves, oh, I'm pro-life, until it came time for a vote. Mm -hmm. And then they would waver or they'd actually mm -hmm. slip out of the room and disappear and they would not vote for life. And so really they were not pro-life. We had a few that flagrantly violated their own vow to support all pro-life legislation and they refused to do Tell so. Tell her about oh. your shocking correspondence with the nuns. Uh, well, when I was early on in my legislative tenure, uh, I got letters from all sorts of people. I got a, a letter from a group of nuns in uh -huh. Kentucky, Catholic nuns, and they were advocating that I support various ecological uh, efforts to uh, save, save trees and save the ecology. And of course, I, I responded yeah. to them as I wrote back to everyone who took the time to write me. And I uh -huh. said, I believe that we should be a good steward sure. of nature and of the creation. The Lord has put us in charge uh, of being stewards of, of the creation itself. But I said, of course, one of the primary issues that I care about most is life. So uh -huh. I also believe that we should advocate for life, especially the unborn and the innocent uh, life that God has created. And they wrote back to me and uh -huh. said, we have enough babies, just worry about saving the trees. What? And I thought, uh. good heavens, a group of Catholic nuns uh -huh. that could care less about babies uh -huh. and is more concerned about trees. And that's really the state of our society. It, it is. All yeah. right, what's another issue Christians should be concerned about? Uh, well, the next one I go over in the book is uh, on gender issues. Uh -huh. um, so this business around uh, LGBTQ plus uh, movement. Now, the Bible is very clear, even though a lot of people don't think it is. The Bible is very clear. It's absolutely clear. On, Two genders. Uh, yes. It, God created men and women, and He sanctified marriage with a man and a woman. I think in New York City now they've recognized over 50 genders. Oh. My goodness. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the plus. It will never end. It, 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 it because won't. Because it, it will end. keep growing and yes. growing. Yes. Yes. The confusion that reigns and the deception. Mm -hmm. You know, I find it fascinating. The things that you're speaking of, whether it's mm -hmm. abortion or life, yeah. uh, uh, the gender wars and some of the mm -hmm. sexual revolution. Obviously, we believe in the sanctity of marriage mm -hmm. as, as instituted by God, and even religious liberty, which I have a feeling we're going to touch oh, on. Yeah. Oh, Those yeah. are things that were espoused by the Manhattan Declaration. Mm -hmm. I actually promoted that uh, in Kentucky, and a number of other states have, mm -hmm. declaring a Christian cry of conscience to support life, marriage, and religious liberty. And those right. are the three institutions that are under attack the most today by the radical left. Yes, they are. And in fact, in this whole LGBTQ plus agenda, uh, there's some legislature uh, that's been proposed. It's called the Equality Act. And it has nothing to do with equality whatsoever. In fact, um, it actually um, would be a significant impact on our religious liberty. Yes. Um, it would essentially, um, give LGBTQ plus persons, um, all of their rights would trump everything else, including Christians' rights. I've noticed that for years in legislation, that when somebody comes up with a radical piece of legislation, they mm -hmm. always give it some beautiful, yeah. emotional right. name. Mm -hmm. And misleading. <laughs> that appeals yes, it to is, the emotions, it it's totally misleading. Well, yes. well let me ask you this. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I find Christians saying to me today, well, I, I don't care about the marriage situation. That's settled. The Supreme Court said it's okay, so it's okay. Well, I would say it doesn't matter what the courts say. It matters what God says. And as Christians, we have to stand up for what, what the Bible says and what God teaches. Because if we don't, I mean, we're, we're supposed to be the ambassadors for Jesus down here. So if we're not right. standing up for him, who else is going to do it? We Slavery wind up getting... was legal for 100 years in this country. Did it make it right? No, it no. did not make it right. No. I use the example of the Dred Scott decision where the Supreme Court declared that a black man was equivalent to a horse. And That's I said, right. that is total abomination. And mm -hmm. yet, that was a legal precedent. Mm -hmm. We obviously had to get beyond a Supreme Court precedent. Yeah. And they finally recognized that the Supreme Court was wrong. Well, they're wrong in this case they're as well. They're wrong on yeah. abortion too. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yep. So, okay, what's another issue Christians should be concerned with? Uh, well, a big one is Israel. Ah, mm. um, hey, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. So, so I think a lot of people in the United States think that we shouldn't care about other countries. You know, they, they want to focus internally. Uh, but Israel is a huge part of God's plan. And it's very important for us as Christians to understand mm -hmm. that God has a heart for Israel. And the Bible says that uh, people who bless Israel will get a blessing. And people who don't get a curse instead. So we need to understand what that means. If we elect politicians who are not going to act favorably to Israel, that's going to have a consequence on us here Absolutely. in the United it States has. as well. Absolutely. Yes. God means what He says on mm -hmm. that. And I uh, just can't emphasize that strongly enough. And yet in this country today, we have all the quote unquote progressives turning right. against Israel, mm -hmm. saying that Israel is a Nazi state, mm -hmm. saying that Israel discriminates, that Israel has apartheid, and all those are lies, mm -hmm. absolute lies. Yeah. Yes, they but are. They're, as, as Goebel said, if you repeat that lie often enough and make it big enough, people will start people believing. People believe it. Hmm. So what does the candidate say about Israel? Mm -hmm. All right, you've got gun rights in here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Second Amendment. Yes. Uh, so a lot of people would argue or believe that Jesus is like this gentle Jesus, right? They, they consider him uh, the baby in the manger. And they don't think that um, he would be an advocate for gun rights. Well, that isn't, uh, that's just one aspect of Jesus, I would say. Um, in the New Testament, we learn that Jesus essentially defended um, what he needed to. So when he approached the temple, and there were all these money changers in the temple that had no business yep. being there, he got out a whip. Yep. And he drove them all out of the temple, right? Well, Jesus, meek and mild, drove out the money. He changers. did. He yeah. did, right? So, um, I, I essentially explain in the book that Jesus would be an advocate for um, gun rights and protecting what you need to. Well, Christians should be very concerned about that because if you know anything about modern history, you know that totalitarian regimes mm -hmm. go after two things. They go after Bibles and guns. Yeah. 
Yep. Get rid of the Bibles, get rid of the guns, and the people are helpless, mm -hmm. and now we can tell them what to do. Yep. Yes. Yep. And really, it's not just to defend our own property, our own rights. We have a responsibility, government indeed has a responsibility to defend mm -hmm. the defenseless, the innocent. Yes. And so, to stand in the gap, so to speak, be mm -hmm. watchmen, and to be ready to defend all those other rights, especially religious liberty in mm -hmm. this land. And so, the uh, Second Amendment guarantees that we can protect all the other rights given to us, not by government, but by God until this point respected by government, sometimes not so much lately. You know, right. in this recent pandemic scare, one of the, there was so, many tramp, so much trampling of constitutional rights by governors who were legislating, mm -hmm. <laughs> although they're not legislatures, and telling people they can't meet and they can't do this and they can't mm -hmm. do that. And, and uh, one mayor, I believe it was, uh, they said, well, what you've said is a violation of the Constitution. He said, well, that's above my pay grade. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Above my pay grade. Well, the governor, excuse me, the mayor of New York City threatened churches that if they didn't abide by his yeah. dictates, he would close them down permanently. Mm. Now, he has no authority to and do one that. One of the that's governors they, they, that, that's held out the longest on opening things up, they said, When are you going to open things up? He said, When you prove to me that you can be responsible, I will return your rights. What? Our rights don't come from government, no, they, they come don't. from God. Yep. It's Government's well, pr supposed to protect those rights. I yep. will share with you a concern that, that I have that even Christians can be deceived uh -huh. in a time such as this yeah. pandemic. I was talking to a lady just recently who mm. uh, was expressing concern over some of our criticisms of various governors, and she's a, a, a Christian. Uh, said that uh, she obviously believes in the Word of God. And I said, well, the most important issues to me when I consider any elected official is their position on life, their uh -huh. position on religious liberty, and their position on marriage, honoring the God-sanctioned uh, uh -huh. relationship between a man and a woman. She said, oh yes, all those are the most important. I said, then why would you be upset? She said, well, I just feel that these, these governors who are trying to make all these dictates, they're just trying I to protect feel. us all. Uh -huh. And I said, well, ma'am, your feelings can be so misleading. Obviously, yeah. Jeremiah himself says that the heart is more deceitful than uh -huh. all else. Exactly. And I said, right. you're being deceived by sometimes feelings. Uh -huh. If you understand and you agree that those issues are more important, right. then what else matters? She said, well, I know, but I just, I just feel that we should follow the dictates. And, and it was back to the emotional appeal. Mm -hmm. And we as Christians have to avoid being deceived. Yes. What is your thought regarding the deception that is paramount oh. and rampant in our world today? Uh, well, the Bible tells us that um, before the tribulation, and actually during the tribulation, deception is going to be rampant. Like God actually sends yep. strong delusion. And we can see it today. I think that now more than ever, it's a very important for Christians right. to read the Bible mm. and know what God's Word says so that you can act your faith That's, out into the, in the really world. You've really touched on the problem there because we have a famine of the Word yeah. in America today. Yes, the average person has no idea what's in the Bible. They haven't read the Bible. They don't read. I'm talking about average Christians. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the, so many pulpits today are, are, are preaching self-help lessons, pull yourself up mm -hmm. by your own bootstraps, have mm -hmm. a good positive attitude, mm -hmm. po modern psychology, instead of teaching the fundamentals of God's Word. Right. Why, for example, the virgin birth is essential to the deity of Jesus and, mm -hmm. and the resurrection and, and every, the average Christian, Walter Martin was the greatest expert on cults ever produced in, in modern history in Christianity. And he once made the comment, he said, the average Jehovah's Witness uh -huh. can turn the average Christian into a pretzel in two minutes because they know what they believe Aww. and they know what, how to prove it and the average Christian doesn't even know what he believes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so sad. That is sad. Well, you've got another issue here uh -huh. and that's drugs. Oh, What's the sure. issue? Sure. Uh, well, a lot of Christians um, think that it's okay to legalize drugs. Um, so we see around the country uh, in a lot of states that um, they're, they're passing legislation to legalize marijuana, yeah. uh, for example. And what will be next? <laughs> oh, it, it, who knows what will be next, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it could be anything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as Christians, we need to realize that um, Satan wants to attack us from any number of ways. And if he can attack our ability to reason and think clearly, um, we need to prevent him from being able to do that. I've Another that. issue you've got here is a real hot button, climate change. Oh, oh, yes. Um, <laughs> so, a lot of people today um, think that essentially the climate's out of control and that humans have the ability to do something about it, right? And the Bible teaches something 
quite different. Uh, we know that God created the world and everything in it, and that God is in perfect control of his creation. And that means that God is controlling the hurricanes and the earthquakes and the famines and all of these things. He has that, control of the weather. Exactly. God controls the weather. So we, we shouldn't be so arrogant to think that humans can impact it. God uses the weather for any number of things. Uh, in the Bible, he uses it oftentimes to bring people to him. And he declared that that would be one of the signs yes. pointing to the end times exactly. is the increase of natural calamities, whether hurricanes mm -hmm. or storms, mm -hmm. uh, earthquakes, all of those things would be increasing in frequency and in intensity. And that's yes. what we're witnessing. I always exactly. get tickled about this climate change anyway because they talk about, well, what we got to do is get rid of all this CO2 in the atmosphere, mm -hmm. you know. And 90% of that's produced by the ocean. The amount produced by man is almost negligible. Right. Mm -hmm. But if they really push that, it gives them control oh, over sure. society because then they can say to an industry, well, you've got to pay a special tax because mm -hmm. you're producing too much CO2 or whatever. Oh. That's already happening. Yeah. Yeah. That is already happening. So you go through a whole lot of issues here, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you have a chapter entitled, Whose Responsibility Is It? Question oh, mark. Right. So what's that all about? Yeah. So a lot of people wonder whose responsibility is it to take care of the, the homeless, for example. Um, is it the government's responsibility to have social programs, uh, build houses for the homeless, uh, to make sure that they're fed every day? So in that particular chapter, I discuss that, no, it isn't the government's responsibility. Uh, in the Bible, uh, God is clear that it's each individual person's responsibility Amen. to Amen. take care of their family and their friends. Well, Marcia, that, that reminds me of a very good example of that. In 1900, we had the greatest natural disaster in the history of the United States, and mm -hmm. that was the Galveston hurricane that killed six to 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. The water just completely went over the island. Mm. And when it was over with, there was no federal aid. There was no state aid. Yep. What happened was the survivors got together. They organized into groups. Mm -hmm. One group gathered bodies. Another group took them out and dumped them in the sea for several days, but they kept washing up, so they started burning them. Another group uh, started raising the level of the island by bringing in uh, dirt. Another group uh, took all the debris and burned it. Another group started building a seawall. They mm -hmm. did all this on their own. Yep, yep. And yet, when Hurricane Katrina occurred, mm. everybody stood in the water and said, when's the government going to come get us? Well, I, the government going to come help us? I'm mm -hmm. reminded in World War II, even as the United States Army was marching across Europe, they had disdain for villages that refused to even clean up their own debris and just said, well, when is somebody going to come and clean up our debris? And yet mm -hmm. we've arrived at that. One of the things that's striking to me, Marcia, is talking about some of these issues and mm -hmm. how have we gotten to where we are today. We're like the frog in a pot mm -hmm. that the water's been getting hotter and hotter and now it's boiling and people mm -hmm. say, oh my goodness, well, how did we get here? And I remind them that the Lord had a message to the church of Thyatira mm -hmm. in Revelation. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, in chapter 2, he, he dictated a letter to the church there in Thyatira, and he said, I have this against you, that you tolerate. Now, of course, what mm -hmm. they tolerated was a particular woman who called herself a prophetess and yet was leading people astray. And, and this principle, I believe, applies to mm -hmm. us today as now 21st century Christians, but how much have we been tolerating oh, yeah. that is absolutely abominable mm -hmm. in the eyes of God and mm -hmm. has led our nation and our society astray, mm -hmm. and now we find ourselves boiling in a sea of deception. It's just, it's tragic, but we've tolerated too much and we need to start speaking out. I agree. Uh, I think it's really hard um, because a lot of people just don't want to stand up because it takes effort. And I and think that... And we're told to stand up. Exactly. We have to be exactly. On, on the cover of the election omen, I have a knight wearing armor yeah. because uh, the Apostle Paul speaks about us wearing the armor of God. And he goes through all of these things yeah. that we need to suit up in. And it's be we have to just realize that we're living in the end times and it's not going to be easy. Um, but God, God has called us to stand up. Well, if Christians don't speak out for righteousness, no one is. Exactly. And, no and one I've got to hurry here for a moment because... The title of your book is The Election Omen. Mm -hmm. Could you very quickly What's summarize the what that means? Sure. Uh, so in the book I, I explain um, that the Bible has given us a pattern um, that, uh, that we can apply to today, essentially. 
And it's essentially what, what happened to the nation of Israel, if we look at them. Yes. Just uh, over time, their kings started out really well. Um, so like King David, he was considered righteous, he obeyed God. But then uh, they, they kind of went through these cycles of kings where they would, you know, start to do something wicked, like Solomon. And a whole evil bunch. Yes. And come back to a good one. Exactly. They'd get a good like one. Like going in a circle. And, and then they would progress a little worse. Yes. And then they'd get a good one, and then they'd progress even a little worse, right? So I illustrate with the election omen that the, essentially the United States has been in this same kind of cycle where we've kind of so had a good leadership. overall you're saying even though there were good kings from time to time, they're going down like it, this. Yes, we're getting closer and overall closer descent. to the reign of the Antichrist, yeah. where we have the, the essentially Satan reigning on the planet. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Well, I, I actually have challenged people because folks are saying, well, who, how can I know who to vote for? Because, you know, I don't like this candidate. I don't like that candidate. And I've said, what if you lived as many of our Christian brothers and sisters around the world do today uh -huh. in a nation where there was no Christian candidate for office? Sure. Uh, there are large nations where you have either a Hindu or a Muslim as uh -huh. the primary candidates for prime minister or president. Uh -huh. Who should a Christian vote for? If you say, well, I can't vote for either one of those because right. they're not Christian, and just sit out, well, you are not engaged, you're going to end up with probably the worst option. So I've, okay. I've challenged people to think, who would you support? And obviously the candidate that those brothers and sisters would have to support with their vote uh -huh. would be the one that would reflect most closely Christian principles, uh -huh. or at least would honor and respect Christians and their exercise of their faith, even in that non-Christian country. Well, folks, uh -huh. we live today in a non-Christian country, I uh -huh. say, and so don't be deceived. We are the minority, but our votes are important oh, to try to help impact who has sway over our government that will respect Christian principles, uh -huh. Christian policies, and obviously the freedom of Christians to exercise their religion as the Lord has called us to do. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I, I think that people need to realize we're not going to find the perfect candidate. Uh, you're, you're looking for Jesus at that point, right? And He's coming. He is. Um, but until then, um, we have to just pick someone um, that, uh, like you said, aligns with the biblical principles as close as we can get. And honestly, I mean, you have to have a red line. And I talk about this, the red line uh, in the election omen. You just make a list of the issues that are most important to you biblically. and. For, for example, for me, it's abortion. So that's my red line. The candidate has to be pro-life and then go down from there until... Um, if they're pro-life, they're going to line up on the other issues anyway. They should. Will. They should. Yeah, they uh, you know, uh, before the 2016 election, uh, uh, the, uh, one of the candidates was Ted Cruz, our United uh, States uh -huh. Senator here in Texas. And we had his father on this program, a remarkable man huh. who grew up in Cuba, was arrested by Castro, was horribly tortured, uh, finally escaped, uh, got on a boat and came to the United States, arrived here with 25 cents in his pocket, mm -hmm. uh, went to work in a restaurant in Austin, Texas, and, and uh, started to the University of Texas and got a degree while working at the restaurant. That's Ted Cruz's father. Mm -hmm. And we asked him, do you have any guidelines for how a Christian should vote? And mm -hmm. he said yes. And he pointed us to Ezekiel 18, verse 21. Exodus, Exodus. I'm sorry, Exodus. Exodus 18, verse 21. Uh -huh. It says, You shall select, speaking to Moses, out of all the people, able men who fear God, uh -huh. men of truth, and those who hate honest gain. Dishonest yeah. gain. Dishonest gain. Yeah, dishonest gain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who hate dishonest gain? Yeah, we don't want gain. those who hate no. honest gain. So we people who are looking for bribes. Right. People who are men of truth and men who fear God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sounds like a good uh, lineup good to me. It yeah. certainly does. Yeah, I, I've actually advocated that same verse because as people have a choice. Uh, it's pretty clear when you look for someone, and and today obviously we have men and women who uh -huh. stand forward for being elected, but fearing God. Uh -huh. and prioritizing a respect for His Word yeah. is the most important thing. Uh -huh. And it's typically a very sharp contrast between two candidates and the platform that they support uh -huh. based on the vow they make. And people need to understand this. When a candidate runs for office in Kentucky and every other state that I'm aware of, they actually have to sign a form that says they promise, they make an uh -huh. oath to support all the policy pla platform policies, I should say, of their political party. Uh -huh. And so even if they say, well, oh. I'm, I'm pro-life, well, really? 
your party is absolutely opposed to life. Well, I'm, I'm pro-marriage, really? Uh -huh. Your party is opposed to marriage. Well, I'm, I'm a Christian, really? Your party has voted in its platform to remove God from any res responsibility yep. or respect, even uh -huh. in our nation, uh -huh. and that's the party you are aligned with. Right. And so you've made an oath to support their policies uh -huh. and their platforms, uh -huh. and obviously the choice becomes very stark yes. in my mind. Yes, it is. Uh, I, I have a chapter uh, in the book uh, where I share a lot of statistics on uh, Christians and the parties that, or the party, I should say, that they align with. And uh, you're right, Tim. Um, one of the parties, uh, the Democrat Party in particular, um, has removed God um, yes, from have. their party platform. And uh, statistics show that uh, atheists and agnostics are the voters who align with the platform for the Democrat Party. Yes. Now, us as Christians, we need to be mindful and knowing what our, what the unbelievers are supporting because we do not want to support the same things that the unbelievers support. Um, I would suggest that if, if you're a Christian and you've been aligned with the Democrat party, you really need to look at their platform and realize that that party is now the anti-God party and you should walk away. Yeah, they've left the Christian uh, fold uh, even though some Christians are reluctant. And they readily to, admit it. Yes, yeah, they, yeah, they, they do. They certainly do. Hello, my name is Nathan Jones, Internet Evangelist here at Lamb and Lion Ministries. We're using the Internet to proclaim the soon return of Jesus Christ to the billions of people who are connected online now and after the rapture. I would like to invite you to come and check out our website at ChristinProphecy.org. Watch whole episodes of Christ in Prophecy and our short prophetic perspectives and the Inbox series for in-depth teaching about end time events. Read from the library of articles on our website and blog covering all aspects of God's prophetic word. Subscribe to our free e-newsletter to receive the Lamplighter magazine, as well as to our social media to stay up to date on current events as they relate to Bible prophecy. Equip yourself to share the good news with others using materials from our online store. I invite you to come and visit ChristinProphecy.org today. Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy. Today we've had Marsha Coonley and we've been discussing her excellent book, The Election Omen and Why Your Vote Matters. Marsha, look into that camera and tell us how we can get a copy of this excellent book. Sure. Please go to rapture911.com for more information. It's simple and to the point. Yep. Thanks again. Thank you. Folks, that's our program for this week. And uh, I hope that, uh, Lord willing, you'll be back with us next week. Until then, this is Dave Reagan speaking for Lamb and Lion Ministries saying, Look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. Dr. Reagan's book, Living for Christ in the End Times, subtitled Coping with Anarchy and Apostasy, was originally published in the year 2000. The second edition is available and it brings the book up to date regarding the rapid decay of our society and the increasing apostasy in the church. He presents many ways to respond to and cope with both the collapse of society and spiritual deception. Some of the chapters are the collapse of society, the apostasy in the church, standing on the word of God, believing in the power of God, relying on the Holy Spirit, practicing tough faith, ordering your priorities, keeping an eternal perspective, and much more. This very relevant book can be yours for a donation of $20 or more, including the cost of shipping. Just call the number you see on the screen Monday through Friday between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Central Time or place your order through our website at lamblion.com. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus. 